All right, guys, so welcome back into another PGA DFS video. This week we got the Arnold Palmer Invitational, and as you guys can see, I am in a hotel, so uh, it's a little bit different video format. Uh, take it with a grain of salt for research this week. It's a little bit different process, and typically when the process is switched up a little differently, I don't like to attack a slate as much. The only problem with this is that the slate is going to be a good one for us. Really soft price, and it's priced pretty much just like a major. Um, let's do a quick recap of last week, though. Um, starting off with the DFS Open, uh, my team actually took second. We lost in a playoff tiebreaker. Our It was like a one-person playoff. Our golfer actually hit the ball at OB in the playoff tiebreaker, and then the other team made birdie on 18. So it was pretty clutch putt by him as well. Um, but overall, the week last week for the Honda Classic was a pretty solid week. Cash build was really easy six out or five out of six there um had a bunch of lines uh six out of six uh matthew naismith and harry higgs ended up being you know pretty solid plays they kind of choked at the end and then obviously we're on sanjay m quite a bit last week harris english the top play on the board top 20 finish overall it was a really solid week last week um and then this week so i may be a green week um which is one that we can attack still kind of got to look through the stats a little bit but it could be a week that we are going to be uh, attacking aggressively and that's going to be the first one of 2020 so i'm looking forward to this weekend you know we'll go through it and talk about the plays um and you guys can determine if that's going to be a green week for you or if you kind of want to you know attack it as a yellow slate all right so getting into the tournament overview uh here are some players that are in some really good recent form uh tommy fleetwood obviously just been making a ton of cuts 33 straight in a row uh billy horschel has been on a roll as well um we know he just came off of two top nine finishes yes he disappointed a little bit last week but still solid week for him harris english just continues to play well uh taylor goose just has made uh, i think 11 straight now in a row rory obviously i really don't have to touch on that five starts this season five straight top tens adam scott's been a beast uh, Kyle Morikawa keeps making a ton of cuts uh terrell has been good Max Homa has been a stud recently as well, and uh, Benny Ann uh, continues to pop uh, quite a bit. Uh, Getting to event history here, uh, Roy McIlroy has three straight top six finishes, and then the year before that was T27. Uh, Stenson hasn't missed a cut, Fleetwood hasn't missed a cut, and Fleetwood has two top ten finishes out of three starts. Uh, Justin Rose hasn't missed a cut. Justin Rose has only missed like two cuts in his last like 15 starts here, so he's been phenomenal. Uh, Mark Leishman hasn't missed a cut in his last four starts. Uh, either it's Benny Ann or Billy Horschel. Uh, the stats that we're going to be looking at this week are going to be total driving, ball striking, par five scoring a little bit. You do want to be able to score on uh, you know this course. Uh, this course does leave you with um, plus 200 out quite a bit. So we're going to be looking at that uh, 200 yards uh, scoring. And then we're also going to be looking at bogey avoidance quite a bit. All right, so starting off here with the high tier, uh, Rory McIlroy, I think if you guys can pay out for him, you definitely should. I already touched on his course history here. Three straight T6 finishes or better. Um, he's a top five stat fit, top five in the model as well. Uh, he's first in par five scoring and first in bogey points. He's a great play. Once again, if you, sh you can pay up for him, you should. And fine with the deck, I'm fine with Fleetwood. Uh, Bryson the Sham is going to be a play that I want to touch on here because it's a very interesting play. So even if you look at his recent form, the events that he struggled at were, I wouldn't say predictable, but there weren't going to be events that you're aggressively attacking him in. One was the first event of the year for him. The other was when he was uh, first traveling overseas. And then the other one was when he was coming back from being overseas. Uh, you know, typically you don't want to play a player in those type of events or, you know, attack them as much. This one should be an event that you should play at uh, well at. He finished T46, second uh, T27. He's a great stat fit. Uh, second, according to my model this weekend, he's also a five or top five model rank as well. Um, I'd rather play Bryson, but Xander right there as well is great stat fit. Uh, great in my model rank, top five in both of those. Uh, he doesn't have any course experience here, but like I said, he is just you know a really solid stat fit. And overall, his finishes uh, so far this year have been really solid, minus his one missed cut there. Uh, pretty much with Xander is you're probably locking in about a top 15 finish there. Uh, so I wish that was a little bit better. I wish he had a little bit more upside as well. Uh, the next play I want to touch on is going to be Adam Scott. Uh, he has okay course history here, uh, T41, uh, T12. 
Uh, decent staff fit as well. I just really like his recent form. Uh, the high tier is kind of loaded, but I don't think we have to overly force any plays there. The only one I want to go out and force. do like the only problem with Henry Stenson is there's a play in the low tier that I'd just rather play because they're pretty much the same play. what you're paying for is his course history t17 fourth missed cut and a t3 uh typically he's a really solid staff at, at this event obviously he doesn't have enough rounds under his event for pga tour stats uh, but I don't mind him as a play. Uh, the other play I like here is going to be Colin Morikawa. Um, played this event once in 2018. He had a T64 finish. He's a really solid staff fit, uh, but I just think that he's going to be able to make the cut. And at this price point, that's why I like him as a play. After that, we got Bubba Watson, who finished uh, T17, T66, T34. Uh, once again, he's a really solid staff fit this week. Um, only top 20, but still going to be a, a good staff fit for you. Um, after that, we got Terrell Hatton. Terrell Hatton, I do like as a play as well. We played him a lot at the WGC event. That was a little bit easier of a play because it was, you know, you, you knew you were going to get four rounds out of him. This week, you know, we're hoping that he makes the cut, and he does have good course history. T29, T69, and a T4. Obviously, he's in really good recent form here as well. So I do like Terrell Hatton as a play this week, especially priced at 8.1K. That won't kill you if he may, uh, misses the cut. Um, but I think I'd rather go a little bit lower to Billy Horschel. Billy Horschel has made the cut here in his last four starts. T50, T54, T13, T20. Uh, he's top 25 in ball striking and total driving. Uh, he's been putting really well as well, top 20 in that. Uh, and he's 85th in believe audience. Wish that was a little bit better, uh, but still, that's not too bad. Um, he's made his last four uh, cuts as well. I'm um, going down to the low tier here. Abraham answers a play that I do like. Uh, not overly too much. This range is pretty loaded. So if you find yourself on another player in this range, you know, I'm just highlighting the top four here. Um, answer missed the cut here last year, but he's a great stat fit. Uh, top 20 there. And he's actually ranks out a little bit better on my model this week as well. And that's just because he's a great toll driver, great ball striker, and, you know, he's top 10 in bogey avoidance as well. So that's a play that I do like. Uh, Ian Poulter is the next play I want to touch on. Uh, T23, T41, T41, and T46 for his uh, course history here. This is a play that I want to touch on as opposed to uh, Henrik Stenson because Ian Poulter is pretty much the exact same play as Stenson. You're just getting him uh, at an extreme discount, and I don't really know why. Uh, his recent form has been slightly better than Stenson. Um, other than the random miscut that he had in there, I you know I just I like Poulter better as a play, especially at this price point. We got Harris English here once again. I think he's a great play this week. Priced at 7.4k, um, he finished 68th here last year, which wasn't great. Uh, 22 T22 the year before that, and then two miscuts. But this is the best golf English has played in his whole career. Uh, he's third overall in the stat model, uh, and then he's 10th overall in my model this week. So English is going to be a great play. I mean, his lowest stat is T82. Uh, the rest are all top 29 or better that we're looking at this week. Um, and then going a little bit lower, our boy Scott Pierce. Yeah, I'm fine with rolling with him this week. Uh, T54 here last year, and then three straight missed cuts. Um, he was golfing a lot better last year, and he still slightly struggled at this event, so I don't want to overly attack him too much. Uh, like I said, I'll probably be dispersing out my ownership a little bit more in this range. All right, and then getting to the value tier here. Uh, value tier here, I, you know, I absolutely love. Uh, you could easily do studs and duds approach this week, and it's not going to be that hard to do. Matthew Naismith, once again, is going to be a top 10 stat fit this week. Uh, sure, he hasn't played this event, um, but you can't really go wrong with it. Top, top 10 staff fit, uh, top 20 in my model this week. He just fits this course really well. Uh, the only thing he struggles with is uh, pretty much par 5 scoring. Everything else is going to be uh, T70 or better. Uh, Harry Higgs echo pretty much what I just said from Matthew Naismith once again this week, except he has a little bit worse recent form. Still, that's 77. Uh, the final round at the Honda Classic was really unfortunate. That cost a couple of uh, couple dollars there uh, with Higgs struggling on the fourth round. But still, I like him as a staff at this week, especially priced at 6.7K. And we have Nick Taylor here, who is a top five staff fit, uh, top 10 in my model this week. 
Uh, he doesn't have the best course history here, only a mi miss cuts, but he just grades out so well. Uh, top 15 in total driving, ball striking, uh, total putting, uh, bogey avoidance, greens and regulation, and then he's also a pretty solid par 5 scorer. Now Patrick Rogers, not the best at fits, uh, great recent form here, and he also has pretty decent uh, course history, T46, T7, miscut, and T20. So those are all really good value plays that, you know, it's not too much of a stretch this week to go out and play, where last week I really didn't want to play any value plays. This week we can definitely go out and play one or two, maybe even three value plays on our line, depending on what your goal is this week. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a like and subscribe. I always do appreciate that. I'll be trying to do a follow-up video for the DFS Open. I uh, just want to make that a separate one. That will probably be out on maybe Friday or so. I uh, just want to keep that separate. Didn't want to have you know this video go too long. So please give me a like and subscribe. If you guys want to join uh, 9to5Nation, the link is in the description below. Thanks.